how did you approach Lori differently this time than you had in the past? Well, you know, I, I don't know how old you are, but you have some gray in your hair. You've been around the sun a couple times. Almost 50. Okay. So, do you remember being 19? Yep. You know, nobody is the same as they were. Lori was a vulnerable, virgin, young, romantic girl who had this horror happen to her. And that has an effect on people. And of course, nowadays we have maybe some more uh, understanding of that and there are more mental health professionals and services for people who suffer trauma. 1978, small town in Illinois. I think like many Americans, there was a lot of like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You're fine, you survived. That was a bad thing that happened, get on with it. And I, I think that was sort of the way that she was. And so what, who we find 40 years later is a woman who is suffering PTSD um, without being able to name it. She's lost marriages about it. She's lost a child over it. And she knows that Michael Myers is coming back because she, she, like Dr. Loomis, is the only person who knows that. Everyone else, every law enforcement, every professional, every doctor would be like, no, no, he's never coming back. He's gonna be locked away forever. Don't you worry about it, get on with your life. And she's like, no, I am preparing for the day he comes back because he will come back and he comes back. That's who Lori Strode is. She's still smart. She's still odd but she knows he's coming back and nobody will believe her and I don't know if you've ever tried to tell somebody that something was gonna happen and nobody believed you oh yeah and then it happened that's that imagine that 40 years and what do you think of, I have my own thoughts about why Lori Strode has struck such a nerve with just the zeitgeist but what do you think is so was is so special about her the first iteration and now when we kind of see her now well <clears throat> I think you have to just really go with the first one because I think really what it was is that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill we can't leave out Deborah Hill because I think the woman's touch is what made these three women characters so real she represented true innocence and if you're gonna make a movie about pure evil what are you gonna put opposite it? Pure innocence. It's like, what an amazing thing to collide in a movie. In a movie where it's a real place with real people. Pure innocence, pure evil. Randomly meeting. That is what I think it was. I think what they created with the writing maybe with the performing, um, was a true vulnerable human being to go against this horrible person. And I think that's really what's gonna, is why it struck the chord. I think anybody who's ever seen that movie would feel that way about Lori Strode. And you've had such a great career. I mean, you've, I've had a great you've time. Played, and you've played everything, kick ass, you know, Heroine, you know, sexy mother effer. <laughs> um, you've just done everything, but um, you you also were the first kind of scream queen, um, and you never seemed to kind of be embarrassed by that or shy away from. Well, that, of course not. First amazing. of all, I wasn't the first. My God, there were a lot of <laughs> well, women in the fifties who were doing a lot of screaming. Yeah. <laughs> my mother being one of them uh, yeah, in the sixties. So I would say I was just a modern, modern. Um, when horror took its its sort of center stage in in the seventies. I certainly represented that for a nanosecond. Um, you know, I got out of it because I knew if I didn't, I never could do anything else. And even though I have no discernible talent, I somehow knew, I think, really, the greatest gift of being the daughter of Tony Curtis and Janet Lee was that I knew, just from being around show business, in the little I was around it, 
because, you know, my parents were actors, but it wasn't like I was hanging out with them. Right. I knew that if I continued to do them, that I would never, ever, ever be cast in anything but them. And so I had done Halloween, then I did The Fog, then I did a couple horror films in Canada, I did a movie in Australia, and when I came back for Halloween 2, I said, I will never make another horror film. I was 20, I was probably 21 years old saying that. Right. Because I knew. And you know what? Within a week, I was cast as Dorothy Stratton in a TV movie about her death. And then from then, I was in Trading Places, and then da da da, and then, then somebody saw me in that, and then blah 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 blah. But it would never have happened if I had continued making horror films. So that was a gift, I think, from being in show business, is having that understanding. Because I think somebody coming from a, a, a world that there was not that understanding, I think they would have taken every job that came right. along because they got, the pay got better. All of a sudden, I got paid things. And I had never gotten paid before. Halloween, I got paid $8,000 total. I had $2,000 a week, which at the time was like crazy <laughs> town. But you know what I'm saying? Right. It wasn't like I got paid anything. I didn't make money off that movie. I got $8,000. I didn't own a piece of it. No one ever gave me any money from it. So I think it was the gift of being the daughter of famous people that I understood that. And so I've been grateful for that experience because it's allowed me obviously to do so many other things and go and sell yogurt and right. you know, do all sorts of things. Well, I think, I, I'm gonna have to wrap it up, but I, one more, um, I think one of the I'm reasons that um, I'm comfortable calling an icon. I'm actually shaking a little bit. I'm not going to deny that. It is because you have always been so authentic um, and genuine in, in real life. And I appreciate that. I think about my memory of you and um, it, the horror films aside, I remember you posed with Willie Galt. I remember it really well, baby. And um, I'm biracial and was in Eastern Kentucky at the time. And I know that that caused such an uproar. It in was our town. a little bit of an uproar. And um, and I just thought you were so brave for doing that. And it's weird that some you would think in the 90s that we somebody wouldn't have to think that that's brave, that you would pose with an African-American man. I appreciate man. that. But that is my biggest memory of you, is how brave you are. And I've kind of followed Thank your you. whole career. Well, and let me say this. You know, I'm 19 years sober. I'm 11 years old Friday, so Mazel Ryan, this is the best present okay. I could ask for. So I just turned 19. That's the bravest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And, you know, I want to, I will die one of these days. And the, twi the tweet, if Twitter still exists, will be Halloween actress dies or Halloween actress dead. It's what it will say. I hope that, and every single day I work at that, that what will live is integrity. Now, I've had a long career and I've made some mistakes and I'm not a human, I'm not a perfect person I'm on any stre in any stretch of the imagination. And I've made mistakes, but I have tried to be brave. Um, I wrote a book about being brave. I write books for children. One of my books is called um, My Brave Year of First. It's about trying new things. That little kids, we ask them every day. Try this, try that. Oh, no, no, no. You want to ride a bike? No, no, it's super fun. Yeah, you're going to fall and scrape your knee and hurt your chin. But it's, you have to be brave. Life is about being brave. So the fact that you would put the word brave next to me interesting that we're talking about a horror movie about a girl who's pretty brave if if that's what i've taken from laurie strode is that she was brave in that moment of complete uncertainty then then that will be a life well well lived
and bravery is, uh, that would be like the best adjective you could ever give me.